I'm Jeanne. Um, so today I'm currently reading Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky and I only started it last night. I'm already on page 118 and so far I'm into it. So um, I was pretty excited about this because I love Perks of Being a Wallflower and I think it's been 20 years or something since Perks came out. So big fan of Perks of Being a Wallflower. I was really looking forward to reading this. He Emma Watson says it's astonishing genius and masterpiece and then he also said that um that he sort of dedicates it to her as well for Emma Watson who inspired the ending on the perks of being a wallflower set and Stephen King who inspired everything else and I kind of think the Stephen King bit is interesting because so far it reads like a kind of classic Stephen King although maybe with better writing um, and I haven't read any I used to read a lot of Stephen King like when I was a teenager, but I haven't read any in years, but it's got that same kind of feeling. So, um, actually, I'm not going to tell you anything about it, but there is a kind of a, a group of friends as well. And there's a there's some woods. There's something weird going on. I'm not sure uh, what so far, but I am really into it. I really like this quote in the back from John Green as well. And he says, a haunting and thrilling novel pulsing with the radical empathy that makes Chbosky's work so special. And I just really liked... Um, the words radical empathy so that is that one and anyway this I kind of I kind of want to read some autumny Halloweeny horrory books which are not really my thing um but I've got together like two piles one is of just books we had in the house and then I've also got a few from the library and I thought I'd, there's lots of them <laughs> but I thought I'd share them with you and then maybe you could tell me which ones if you've read any if they're kind of worth reading so these are the pile, first of all, that were in um, our house. So I've got, I'll probably read this one because it's really tiny, and this is The Signalman by um, Charles Dickens, which um, Bert says is my uh, Victober. This is all I'm doing for Victober, guys. Um, so this is The Signalman, and I've actually seen there's like a BBC kind of adaptation of it, so I've watched that, so I sort of vaguely know the story. But Bert said it was great, and it says in here, it's really short, Oh, there's two stories, The Signalman and Boy, The Boy at Mugby. But it says that his, it's his last finished masterpiece. He lived for another three and a half years after its publication. So there's that one. Um, I've got this from Bert's pile of kind of little trashy books, and it's Night of the Vampire by Raymond Giles. Um, and it is a really great cover, um, although he kind of put it on my pile of books to read and then told me it was three stars. So I don't, you know, it's not... <laughs> not making me want to read it big time but it's short um and I do love a vampire book I was trying to see if it says anything but it just says it's a story full of black magic terror written with frightening realism a story of an evil and corrupt battle between modern vampires and werewolves and satanic possession this is non-fiction so it's moonology um working with the magic of lunar cycles so it's sort of a bit astrology I think and just lots about the moon um one I've had for a little while. It looks kind of easy enough to read as well. This one I've had also had for a while and this is um, Witches Hunted Appropriated Empowered Queered, Queered by edited by Anna Colin um, and it has lots of different people writing in it including Marina Warner who I always enjoy kind of seeing in there and it's part half you know it's in French and in English and then it's kind of set out quite nicely as well um but I have picked it up a couple of times trying to find any more bits for you that's an amazing picture this is occult buildings by well it says courtesy Victoria Halford and Steve Beard so I have picked it up a few times but I've often found it's like a little bit um it's verging in the academic onto the academic but maybe I will give it another go so it's got um yeah Marina Warner Let's see if there's anyone else I know no maybe you do there's uh, Olivia Olivia Marbouf Angus Cameron Anna Colin Redfern Barrett Richard John Jones and A.A. Bronson in conversation with Vincent Simon so it does look kind of super interesting um which is my nails I've also got The Green Witch, which my auntie bought me a little while ago, and it's all natural magic. It's by Aaron Murphy Hiscock 
and it's your complete guide to the natural magic of herbs, flowers, essential oils and more. So I always enjoy kind of those witchy, natural witch kind of books. So this one, um, yeah, again, it kind of looks easy to read, lots of different bits in it. Looks nice for now. I just picked this up and then I realised I have no, absolutely no idea how to say the author's name. Uh, Victor Slav Nisval. It's Valerie and her Week of Wonders. And this is like a really lovely um, edition of it. So this is also a film. So I wonder if you've seen the film. And it says it's a goth gothic novel translated from the Czech by David Short. And it was written originally in 1945. This edition is 2005 on Twisted Spoon Press. Um, and it also, yeah, has some illustrations too. So, yeah, the film is wonderful. Um, Bert says it's, he's read this, I think I bought it from a while ago. He said it's um, quite experimental, so he's not convinced that I will read it, but it's, it's an option. I've got a Shirley Jackson here as well, because, you know, she's the queen, isn't she, of, of this kind of weird, gothic-y, verging into horror books. Um, I so I love the haunting of Hill House, and I love what's her other one? Does she have a list of them? Um, we've always always lived in the castle, so I love both of those. I read Hangs the Man, and I didn't really enjoy it that much. And Bert said he'd also read Bird's Nest, and didn't love that. So I'm not sure about this one, um, but I'd like to give it a go. It's just exposing the murderous cruelty of children, the blindness and selfishness of adults. Shirley Jackson reveals the ugly, ugly truth behind a perfect world. Um, this keeps coming onto my kind of pile of books to read. I've sort of sorry, I've forgotten what it is, but uh, keeps telling me about it though. But it's Death in Spring by Miss Rodoreda, a novel, and it's translated from the Catalan. And it says, considered by many to be the grand achievement of her later period. Death in Spring is one of Miss Rodera's most complex and beautifully constructed works and it tells the story of bizarre and destructive customs of a nameless town through the eyes of a 14 year old boy. So it's, I think it's going to be one of those maybe weird eerie type of books and this is from 2000, mm, this one is 2009, I think originally published in Catalan in 1986. It's a lovely edition. I've got The Familiars by Stacey Halls, which is a bit of a, a witch one. Um, and I got this as a gift from uh, people in work for my birthday. Um, I think I saw someone recently had really enjoyed it. So I think it's going to be maybe a, a bit of a nice read for now as well. Quite a, maybe quite an easy read. Um, do you know what, though? Reading Ducks as well, and I kind of put it down. So really, reading Ducks the report, each time I pick up a book, which is just like quite straightforward plot, I'm just like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> anyway, so that's that one. And then the other one I've got is this one, which is Santa Muerta by Lu Lucina Stone. Um, and it's set in 2030. And it says that she blends folklore with modern technology and time travel. And it's a seductive new series. So this one I've had for a little while. And I'm not sure um, if the writing style is going to be for me, but maybe I should try that one. So that is the books we happen to have at home. And then I've been kind of ordering some from the library. And these are the ones I kind of, I guess I particularly need help with, whether I should give them a go. So this looks interesting. This is one that actually Bert had brought up, got out of the library, which is called If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. And it says, and this is what's drawn me in, that it's like Donna Tartt's Secret History. So that's why I want to read it. Um, but as a young actor, elite conservatory, someone's committed murder. Emily St. John Mandel says it's good. So it's a literary thriller. I don't know. I've never come across it be interested if you have read it. I do have this out. Um, I saw that Heather from Soggy Expat Book Nerd is going to read it um, and she has read it. She did this really great vlog about it which I'll link and so she made me want to pick it up but then her vlog kind of said it was a bit boring. I think she was mixed with a bit boring and then quite interesting but it is quite big so it's actually just like pretty much history of um, uh, Salem witchcraft. But it's meant to be. I mean, it's got great reviews on it. I don't know. Um, this one, I don't think this is necessarily kind of horror-y, but it kind of is a bit of a weird one, maybe. Um, and this is Bunny by Mona Awad. And I've had this at the library for a little while, and then I was also watching Books and Lala, and she really enjoyed it. So it made me want to kind of pick it up as well. 
and it says on the back that it's hilarious and subversive, magical and knife sharp. Knife sharp. So it's a New England university, and there's these girls that are all called Bunny. We call them bunnies because that is what they call each other. Seriously, Bunny. Hi, Bunny. Hi, Bunny. What did you do last night, Bunny? I hang out with you, Bunny. Remember, Bunny? So it looks like it might be good. I mean, I've known about this for forever, which is Midnight of the Go in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Byrne, and it's best-selling true crime classic. Um, but I don't really know anything about it. And everyone says it's great, don't they? So, yeah, the best non-fiction novel since In Cold Blood, says Edmund White. And it's um, Savannah, which I'm kind of interested in. A crazy quilt of oddballs, posers, snobs, sorceresses and outlaws. And this has been around for a while, so 1994. Do you want to read that one? I've got The Changeling by Victor LaBelle, which I've previously got out, not read and taken back. I'm kind of intrigued by this one. So it's about um, a child who's who's a changeling but I think it's one of those ones that's quite a slow burner as well so it goes um for a, a, a quite a while um just kind of telling you about everyday life and then gets a bit weird so I'm I like the sound of it but um Bert had read a, another book by Victor Laval I can't remember which one he read and he wasn't I don't know if he finished it but he wasn't that into it so I don't know and then I've just been to the library this morning actually and I had um three I picked up three. So this one, Snow Blind by Christopher Golden, is about a, which looks like a bit of a trad uh, ghost story. It's about a town where there's this massive snowstorm. Love. Oh, I'm having some tea. And then um, I think lots of people die in this snowstorm. And then the people in the town kind of wishing they're coming, that they would come back. And then there's another storm. And then I think they do. So, yeah. Alice by Christina Henry. So this is like a, it is a mind-bending new novel inspired by the twisted and wondrous works of Lewis Carroll. I quite like a Lewis Carroll um, retelling. Um, this one is from 2015, so quite recent. And it was also, I saw on Goodreads that they were doing like Horror Week and it was one of the books um, listed on that that was actually at the library. So I will um, have a go at this one. I think it starts in like a mental um, asylum, so that's always uh, good and then the last one i've got is mr splitfoot by um samantha hunt um and i think this one looks like it's a bit more maybe literary than some of the other ones i've got out so um and I'm, i haven't read any samantha hunt but i am interested in her so it sounds kind of good and it's from 2016 um and uh, reviewed by Charlotte Bronte through a medium so that's always good and, and Charlotte Bronte says that she gets chills from it so yay but also Kelly Link likes it and usually I think we can trust Kelly Link because I think she's amazing and she often um, gives blurbs for books that I end up liking so that is that so that's like a massive pile of books that I'm not even going to hold up but I'd really appreciate if you um, have enjoyed any of these or if there's some kind of horror-y, gothic -y, strange, autumn-y, october -y, halloween books that you could recommend. I do have a few more on order from the library as well, but they haven't arrived yet. So, yes, it's uh, Saturday. I don't have everything, anything on today, so I'm going to get back into reading uh, Imaginary Friend, and um, I'm enjoying it. So, if you're reading this as well, let me know what you think. I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye!